Make us one. Come, come, Holy Spirit, come. Flame of love, send us forth. Come, come Holy Spirit, Spirit, come. Hallelujah.
sins, Christ himself bore our sin in his body on the cross, so that free from sin we might live for righteousness. Trusting in God's grace, let us now confess our sin. Living God, we confess that we look for the living among the dead. We are foolish and slow to believe the promise of the prophets. We are frightened and full of doubt, even when you stand among us. Forgive us, God of grace. Open our hearts to receive your word and feed us with the breath of life, the life that death cannot destroy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray, but now we have returned to the shepherd and guardian of our souls. God's beloved children, peace be with you. Jesus Christ loves you and frees you from your sin by his death and resurrection. To God be glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, on this day, you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And I ask Elika and Ava to come up, who will be helping with the reading. First reading from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Jesus has ascended, and the disciples are in Jerusalem. On the Jewish festival day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes to the disciples as Jesus has promised. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. よくよく言っておく。私たちは自分の知っていることを語り、また自分の見たことを証し,しているのに、あなた方が私たちの証を受け入れない。私が地上のことを語っているのに、あなた方が信じないならば、天上のことを語った場合、どうしてそれを信じるんだろうか。天から下ってきたものを。誰も天に登った者はいない。そしてちょうど王子が現れていたように、人の子もまた挙げられなければならない。それは彼を信じる者が全て永遠の命を得るためである。神はその一人子を賜ったことに。この世を愛してくださった。それは御子を信じる者が一人も滅びないで、永遠の命を得るためである。神が御子を世に使わされたのは、世を裁くためではなく、御子によってこの世が救われるためである。Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each One heard from speak, heard them speaking in their native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Perithians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, 
Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Crean, and the visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and all signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Psalm 104 is a hymn in, hymn in praise of God, the creator. We will read responsively verses 24 through 30 from a translation of the Bible called The Message, which uses everyday language. What a wildly wonderful world, God. You made it all with wisdom at your side, made earth overflow with the wonderful creations. Ships plow those waters, and Le Leviathan, your pet dragon, romps in them. You come, and they gather around. You open your hand, and they eat from it. Take back your spirit, and they die. Revert to original mud. Second reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 3b through 13. Here, Paul helps the Corinthians to understand that the Spirit creates the unity of faith and gives all Christians diverse gifts for the coming benefit of all. No one can say Jesus is Lord except the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts but the same spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in every one. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. To one is given through the spirit, the utterance of wisdom, and to another, the utterance of knowledge, according to the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All of these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, 
through many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. We now turn to the gospel for today. I invite you to rise as you are able out of respect for the gospel. The gospel comes to us from the book of John. Here the risen Jesus appears to his disciples, offering them a benediction, a commission, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hear now the gospel according to John chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. I invite the kids to come on up. All right, let me move this guy out of the way. Pretty cool, right? Okay, everybody, how are you? You guys have had a long weekend, yeah? No school? No school. That is good news. Five days off? That is a lot of days off. What have you been doing with your days off? No, like, have you been playing outside? Yeah, playing outside with friends? Yeah. Lots of good stuff. Oh, lots of good stuff on days off. Okay, so everybody, we've got we have a we have a little um, a little job just in a minute to do before we do that job. It's not a job; it's a fun job. I wanted to talk about the story that we have that we read. Your mom was just up here reading it about when after Jesus went up to God, went up to God the Father. Jesus sent God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Can you say that, Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came like a wind. Can you make a sound like a wind? Oh, that's really good. Make it louder, ready? Congregation, can you do it too? Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Yeah, like a wind. And that wind filled up the disciples. And guess what they did? Very good. The Holy Spirit, appeared, like little tongues, we call them tongues of fire. Something like fire looked like was on their heads, above their heads, and then filled the disciples to speak in different languages and tell people about Jesus in different languages. Now, do you know any words in another language besides English? Do you know how to say hi? And do you know Spanish? Do you know how to say hello in Spanish? How do you do that? Do you know? I think Hola, is it hola? Yeah. Do you, how do you say one in Spanish? Uno. Okay, that's great. What's if you know how to say it, some hello in another language? Just say it. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, very nice. Yes. Uh, how about goodbye? Does anybody know how to say goodbye in a different language? Choose. Paka. Ciao. Yeah, good. So good languages. All right. So they spoke, but they weren't just saying hello and goodbye. They were, they were preaching to people about Jesus and God's love. So this is, we had, did you notice we have different colors of, yeah. It, yeah, red is a color for today. And it's a day where we remember those tongues of fire and how the Holy Spirit was filled. The disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. We were filled with the Holy Spirit too. The Holy Spirit helps us do good things in the world. It helps us be nice to people. It helps us be kind to people. And you know what? It's a good thing to pray to the Holy Spirit. And we can pray to the Holy Spirit and we can say, come Holy Spirit, come. That's what we're going to do right now. But we're going to pray while we do a little march. Okay, come here. 
a little march. Yeah. Now, everybody gets one of these. Be careful, everybody. Here you go. I know, don't you? Now, these are, do you know what these are called? Pinwheels. And when you walk with them, here, sweetie, when you walk with them, they, the wind makes them go. Look at this. So line up behind me. And this is the deal. We're going to walk to the back doors back there. Line up behind me, honey. Right here. Okay, one behind me. Good job. Now, this is how it's going to go. I'm going to go, come Holy Spirit. And you guys yell, come. So I yell, come. I say, come Holy Spirit. What do you say? Yeah, but you got to yell it, man. Ready? Come Holy Spirit. Yeah, in congregation, you can help too. We're going to walk to the back and then we're going to turn around and come back. And you can wave them, but you can just hold them high and they'll, they'll go around. Ready? Here we go. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. All right, now we're going to try something different. Come here, Ben. I'm going to sing it. And then you sing it after me. Ready? It goes like this. Come, 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 Holy Spirit, come. Now you. Come, 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 Holy Spirit, come. Right, we. Come, 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 Holy Spirit, come. Now you. Come, 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 Holy Spirit, come. Good job, everybody. All right. Here, I'll take your pinwheel. And then we'll say our prayer. All right, get in our prayer circle. Ready? Come down here, kiddo. Come on. One, two, three. Good job. One, two, three. Good job. Okay. Dear Holy Spirit, come fill us to be your light in the world. Amen. Amen. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So who here likes to be interrupted? Does anyone like to be interrupted? I No, right? No, thank you. I think it's pretty safe to say on the whole that most of us do not like interruptions. To be fair, that word interrupt kind of has a negative connotation about it. So there's that to it. The word interrupt is defined as stopping the continuous progress of an activity or process. So something is going on. The idea is there's something going on that you're doing until something else breaks in. Like the game buzzer interrupted his thoughts, or George was answering the question until Larry interrupted with his own answer. So when we use that word interrupt, it means there's something else going on, a conversation, a thought, or activity, and it was abruptly ended. Interruptions are, of course, part of our daily life. And during the pandemic, which seems a little bit ago, it seems a long time ago and yet just the other day in different ways, doesn't it? But during the pandemic, interruptions seem to become really part of our daily life is we spent so much time online in Zoom meetings or Google Classroom meetings or FaceTime with family or friends. And how many of you had one of those um, meetings online interrupted by something that happened? Like a cat jumps on someone's table, right? And walks across the table or someone, um, a little one, maybe in the household comes darting across the background or maybe even a spouse. As I was thinking about this, I was remembering one time uh, my husband was on a call with the head of his organization. So it's a big call. I had no idea. And so I, I came up the stairs and just started sauntering in the background. And as I was in the middle, he turned around with this look like, you got to be kidding me. And I looked and saw who was on the screen. And I tried I made, tried to make a graceful exit, which just meant I literally like stopped, dropped and rolled. <laughs> like I just got on the ground and 
kind of rolled away. It was not graceful at all. It was an interruption, another meeting interrupted. So I know you probably know where I'm going with this idea of interruptions on this day of Pentecost. Pentecost can be talked about in a lot of ways. One way is people talk about Pentecost as the coming of the Holy Spirit, as Jesus promised the Holy Spirit would come. It can also be talked about as the birth, the birthday of the church. A lot of people talk about it that way. But another way we can talk about Pentecost is as a plain and simple interruption. It's an interruption, Pentecost is. In verse one, we get why we get the scene. The scene is set for us. It's set for interruption. It's the day of Pentecost. This is the Jewish festival celebrated 50 days after Passover. It was a pilgrimage feast, which meant pious Jews from all over the Mediterranean would come to Jerusalem for this, for this high festival day. Jewish people who lived all over the Mediterranean and spoke different languages and different dialects. So here they are in Jerusalem. And then you've got the disciples still in Jerusalem after Jesus' resurrection and Jesus' ascension. It's not just the disciples. If you look in the chapter before, we learn that there's more than just the disciples. There's new believers. And Luke tells us 120 new believers there who are gathered with the disciples in Jerusalem. So you've got people there for Pentecost. You've got people like the disciples who are waiting their next move. You've got the new believers who are there, everyone going about their independent business. And then verse two hits with these words. And suddenly, and suddenly from heaven came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, kind of like we just did, except we didn't, our winds were kind of calming, like shh right? This was a sudden rush of a violent wind. Divided tongues of fire were on the disciples' heads. They started speaking in different languages. And suddenly, words of interruption, just like that. The Spirit interrupts the believers' gathering, interrupts the Pentecost festival goers. And all that hubbub of the wind and the languages gets their attention, So whatever anyone was doing before, the disciples talking amongst themselves, what's our next move? The believers wondering themselves, the Pentecost festival goers going to wherever they were going. Everything is disrupted, interrupted by the spirit. This is a feature of the Holy Spirit, interruption. And it's a feature that stops us in what we're doing. And just as we just talked about with those interruptions, interruption makes us by nature uncomfortable. The spirit makes us uncomfortable as human beings. The spirit of interruption stops us from our plan. How dare the spirit do that, right? How dare the spirit stop us in what we have planned and our idea for what our life whether individually or as a community is going to look like. I said this before, but I think the Holy Spirit, we have a problem in our tradition. We don't do a good job of talking about the Spirit. And I've, I've reflected on this this week with this text. I think it's why we, plain and simple, don't like interruption. And so it's just easier not to talk about the Spirit as this kind of thing out there, some kind of subpar person of God, which the spirit isn't, hear me clearly, (laughs) the spirit is not some subpar person of the Trinity. But we don't, we get so uncomfortable with this unknown feature of the spirit, this stopping in our tracks kind of spirit. But this is a day where we can't look away and we can't explain it away. This is what the spirit does, stops the plans of our lives, makes us uncomfortable. It makes us stop and wonder in our life, where is God rushing in to you, into your life? Where is the spirit working, pushing you in your life to go? It happens to us as individually, certainly, but also as a community. The question becomes, where is the spirit interrupting our life as Trinity, stopping us in the tracks of what we've done in the past and asking us to see something new? Interruptions, whether of the spirit or otherwise, are not only hard because they stop. They stop what we have planned. They stop the status quo, but they also ask 
the spirit, the interrupting spirit asks us to do something new, asks us some, to do something more. You picture it, the believers had to stop sitting by themselves in that room together when the spirit came in. They had to get out and speak about God. The interruption of that spirit stopped them from what they were doing and moved them to something else. And that movement can be super scary. Movement is scary. Uh, so in my former work, as you know, I was a, an attorney. And um, as an attorney, I argued several, a lot of my practice was appellate practice. So I argued several cases before appellate courts. And that's where a higher court is reviewing a decision of the trial court. So there's no jury in an appellate court. And uh, so it's a court of review and you have a panel of appellate justices. And when a court has an oral argument, an attorney from each side gets a certain amount of time to argue their case. And as you're preparing for that, you of course prepare a written statement as a, as a lawyer, you have something written you know, to say in front of the judges, but depending on your panel, you might not get any of your prepared statement out. You might only say, you always start with, may it please the court, my name is Kristen Werfel, attorney for the blah, blah, blah. That may be the only prepared statement you get out because if you have an active bench, what's called an active bench, a panel of judges that really like to talk, they will immediately interrupt you with questions. Sometimes they even interrupt each other with questions as they're going back and forth, but it is pure and simple interruption, pure and simple interruption when you're up in front of an active bench of an appellate court. And I just remember being so worried about those interruptions. How can I possibly respond? How can I possibly know what to say? That came to mind because it's similar with the interruptions of the spirit. When we're stopped in our tracks and asked to do something, it's so easy to be afraid and be fearful. The unknown is actually the most thing to be afraid of, I think. What is coming at, if it's unknown what's coming at you, it makes us so fearful. But when it comes to the spirit, the spirit doesn't leave us alone. The spirit equips us. In that reading that Megan read for us in 1 Corinthians, did you sense that laundry list of gifts from the spirit? That whole reading is gifts that the spirit gives to each one, a gift to each of us that makes us ready for those interruptions. It's not like we're just thrown out there by ourselves or thrown in front of an appellate court with unknown things coming at you without the skills. Necessary. God equips you, Trinity. God equips you and me to meet those interruptions, to be with the spirit. I love the word. Did you catch that word when Megan was reading? activated, activated on us. These gifts are activated, each of us as members of bodies of, uh, as members of the body of Christ. Knowing we're equipped doesn't mean that the interruptions will be easy. It's not saying it's going to be easy, but knowing we're equipped gives us confidence to move forward, to go where the spirit leads. And who knows, it might even have us looking for interruptions, maybe or at least not being so afraid of them and running from them. Friar Jacques Philippe is a Catholic priest from France, and he's written several books on themes of Catholic spirituality. He has a book called Interior Freedom. And in this book, at one point, he talks about a, a 19th century Carmelite nun, St. Therese, and talks about how she had difficulty with interruption and how she learned how to live with it and actually looked for it. He writes this, listen, St. Therese did not like having her work interrupted. Sometimes she was asked to do work requiring quite a lot of concentration, but the schedule of the Carmelite community was so intense that she had very little time at her disp disposal. When she finally found an hour or two to devote to the job, she applied herself in the following spirit. I choose to be interrupted. If a good sister then came by to ask her for some little service instead of coldly sending her away, 
Therese made the effort to accept the interruption with good grace. And if nobody interrupted her, she considered that a charming present from her loving God and was very grateful to him. Interruptions are hard, my friends, and we may never be able to say with St. Therese, I choose to be interrupted. That might be a tall order. But we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to have fear. We don't have to have that interruption of being stopped in our tracks mean we don't go anywhere. Because we can go this, as the Spirit equips us, as the Spirit guides us. May we follow that spirit. And may the peace that passes all understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Join me in confessing our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Before we come to God, in prayer, please share any additional prayer requests you would like to include.
As we pray, please answer each petition of hear us, O God, with the words, your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the presence of the Spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Come, Holy Spirit, and kindle the flames of our witness to God's presence. We pray for the leaders of the church and all the people of God, that together we might live the gospel and reach out to those with needy hearts. Hear us, O God. Come, Holy Spirit and renew the face of the earth. We pray for oceans and sky, for rivers and deserts, for lakes and forests, for mountains and grasslands. Hear us, O God. <clears throat> Come Holy Spirit and pour out your justice on all nations. We pray for countries racked with violence, for, for soldiers and civilians, for peacemakers and relief agencies. We pray for communities torn apart by gun violence for those who are incarcerated and for those who hunger. Hear us, O oh God. O oh God of life, you are older than time. You have seen generations who have died through sacrifice, war, and courage. You have comforted generations who mourned and grieved and sang solemn hymns and laid flowers on graves. Gather us in your embrace and cradle us with your compassion this Memorial Day as we remember those who have died in past wars and conflicts. Help us to remember that we were there when the mountains were formed. You were there to soothe our grief and breathe hope into the hopeless. You are with, you are with us still. We give you thanks for life in Jesus and pray that your lives may be reflections of his love. Hear us, O oh God. Come Holy Spirit and give hopeful visions to the young, and life-giving dreams to the old. We pray for those whose lives are afflicted with fear, for those who feel distance from your light, and for all those in need in any way, especially Brian, Sharon, Myra, Stacy, Ava, Rodriguez, Craig, Belay, Jill, Rena, Mariana, Inger, Pear, Kathy, Patrick, Allen, Gapreet, Myrtle, Merlinda, Robin, Trista, Maud, Shiloh, Lawrence, Bob, Jonathan, Joseph, Kirsten, Susie. The Bright family uh, for their loss of Becky Bright and Peter and all those ill with COVID. Hear us, O oh God. Come Holy Spirit and guide us in our work. We pray for firefighters and scientists, for midwives, nurses, and doctors, for writers and housekeepers, for teachers and artists, for parents and students, for all who live out the gifts of the Spirit in their lives. Hear us, O oh God. Come Holy Spirit and bind us to the communion of saints who have gone before us. We remember with thanksgiving all those who served and witnessed by your power, especially Sharon, mother of Damian Riley and Pastor Schumacher. In your boundless compassion, comfort all those who mourn, giving them sure and certain hope in the resurrection through our savior, Jesus Christ. Hear us, O God. Into your abundant hands, O oh God, we commend ourselves and all whom we pray, trusting in your abundant mercy. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be with you always. Please share greetings of peace with one another. God's peace, God's peace, peace, Chris. God's peace to everyone who's gathered online. It's wonderful to have you here and wonderful to be together. As always at Offertory, our offering plates are posted at their normal locations. I invite you to pray this prayer with me. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day, you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, 
Give us glad and generous hearts ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to rise as we move into communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Christ, Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body, people of every nation and tongue. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and with all the witnesses of the res resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Holy, In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come, Christ's table is ready. You may be seated.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gifts of his body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal, you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Now send us forth to be your people in this world and to proclaim your truth today and every day. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And as we get ready to be sent into the world, I invite you to rise so that I might bless you. Please rise. People of God, we are sent out in the power of the Holy Spirit to be God's witnesses, to proclaim the good news, and to share the love of God in Christ. So go from here in the power and strength of God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We join now in singing our final hymn, Gracious Spirit, Heed Our Pleading. You may be seated for that song. Go in peace. Share the good news.